Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Burnt Pancakes Podcast. I'm your host, Katie Fenske, and every week I'm here to remind moms that everyone burns their first pancake. Now, before I start this next mom conversation, I want to ask all of you who have been following the podcast for a while, who love listening to these, to take a minute to leave me a five-star review, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and help out the podcast grow and reach more people. Share it with your friends if you know someone who might want to listen. Okay, back to the podcast. Today, I am interviewing a mom. Um, she's a mom of three and a life coach and a fellow podcaster. Her name's Tanya Valentine, and we had the absolute best conversation. I say it all the time that I started this podcast because I loved chatting with moms, and we could have chatted for about two hours, but you know, we had kids and we we had to end at some point, but we covered everything from the transition to motherhood, that feeling of mom guilt, finding your tribe, self-care marriage. We covered it all. And it was just such a delight talking to another mom who I felt like when she was describing things, I was like, yes, 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 exactly. All of that. Um, so I think you're going to love her. Um, her podcast, the momentum podcast is wonderful. She helped, she helps moms go from treading water to finally finding their flow. So I think you're going to absolutely love her and I hope you enjoy this. Hello, Hi. Tanya. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me on. I am I'm very so excited. excited I love here. talking mom life and you were the perfect mom I yeah. think to talk about. <laughs> Oh, why don't you start? Tell us how old your kids are. Uh, they are six, four and two. Busy. So still very little. Yeah. Very busy. <laughs> are they all at home right now or do you have some away? No, I've got, so my six-year-old, she'll be seven in November. So she's in first grade in elementary school. Grade. And then, yeah. And, um, then my middle one, Rocco, he's in pre-K. So he goes three days a week. They're half days. Okay. And then Ser Serena, my two-year-old, she's at home. Okay. So you're so busy. I, my youngest just started TK and it's full day at our, our school. So this is like the first month that I'm like, they're all in school. Oh my like, God. I've waited 10 years. What is that though. like? Um, at first I was like, am I going to be so sad? Cause like, I'm, I don't have kids yeah. at home. And it was weird leaving preschool. Yeah. Cause like all my boys had gone in that preschool and I'm like, and I was kind of uncertain about TK yeah. cause it just seems he's four and he's in school full day. What but is TK? It's called transitional kindergarten. So it's for kids who are born after the kindergarten cutoff. So they're basically okay. turning five this year. So, okay. Yeah. Kind of I pre-K TK, but it's full but it's day, full day public school, same time. And I was like, he is going to have a hard transition. Cause he's used to going three hours, three days a week. And so this was like all day, pack a lunch. You're there till two 30. Yeah. He has done just fine. And I'm awesome. finding that it's heaven. It's so really just like the, right. the that's, most that's good I ever to hear. had. Yeah. The most I ever <laughs> had was three hours, three times a week that he would go to preschool. So now it's like, whoa, like I can do so much. And I mean, I fill yeah. those hours every single day. <laughs> I bet. You, oh yeah. It's just, I thought, oh, I'm going to read all these right? books and meet friends for coffee. And it's like, I'm doing all this work and then cleaning the house and doing this. And then it's time to pick them up. So yeah. I know, but I, I do by. when, when I see like a mom out at the grocery store with like a little baby in their cart, I'm like, Oh, yeah, I know that's, I know. yeah, so. <laughs> but you're still in it though. What? So one of the questions I had for you was, um, I get asked this a lot. What transition was the hardest for you going from zero to one, one to two, mm. two to three, or were they all just magical Hard. and wonderful? <laughs> no, fuck no, excuse my language. Um, no, uh, they were all tough and different. Mm -hmm. Becoming a mom, it was really hard. Um, you know, it's just getting used to this new normal and learning to trust your intuition. Oh, for which sure. you're like the that doubt and like the anxiety and the worry and to 
letting go of what you thought had imagined at least with the second and the third you're like okay well I know like this and that can go wrong like and you're not as like you know anxious about it I guess Mm -hmm. like you're not running to the doctor every other day (laughs) you know this is like summing it up exactly (laughs) yeah yeah um so but then when oh god when I had my second and they're 22 months apart uh, that was rough because, oh my God, I, I was just so overwhelmed. Yeah. Well, 22 uh, month year olds, the, that is like the hardest stage for me from the time yeah. they started walking until about, yeah. well, let's see 10, my oldest is 10 now, the, that stage is oh. very hard. <laughs> it's just once they start moving and then have another baby with that. Whoa. Yeah. And like the temper tantrums and, uh, like you mm-hmm. think you have everything figured out like with the sleep and the naps and then you just go back to square one and right right yeah um so i don't even know what my answer would be because i <laughs> like they're all hard like they are. it all was hard yeah <laughs> i always say like 0 to 1 like rocked my world i think yeah. it was the same thing like i went in thinking it was going to be a certain way and then i was like yeah. this is nothing and i was that person that just like questioned everything I did. You know, I'm doing yep, this wrong. Yep, I'm doing this yep. wrong. Why isn't I'm doing this it. right? Everything. And thinking that there is a right way to mm-hmm. do things and searching for, right, like wanting somebody to tell me like, this is how you do it. And yes. like everything that I was like, re- and I prepared, like I read all. Oh, of I these. totally prepared. <laughs> and and uh, then, uh, I don't know, we just like went all out the window. Nothing and I'm just, went like, the looking... way the book said. No, nothing. No. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So That's what, yeah, for any like new moms out there listening or watching, like, don't read the books, don't read. (laughs) No, I mean, it's great, like, as like a resource, but don't, like, it's okay. Like, there is no right way. Like, you find the right way that works for you and your family. Mm -hmm. I actually did a sleep training course right before my third. You would think, like, it's my third baby. Like I should know what That's I'm doing so now, funny. but I remember yeah. the first, I read this book that made me a nervous wreck. Cause I was like trying to follow the schedule. Wait, that which had. one was it? Was it the, um, baby wise? Yes. Baby wise. I yes. did it too. I did it too. Which like, it does have like, if you just use the concept, it has great concepts, it's a concept. but I Don't read the, oh, this me is too. the two week old newborn schedule. This is what you try and do. And I would literally try and follow that I schedule. Do. And I'm like, he only took a 30 minute nap and it's I supposed know. to be two hours. What do I and do? How am I going to make up for this? Like, right. So <laughs> then after my second, my second horrible sleeper, best sleeper to, right now, like as a seven-year-old, he will hit the pillow, go to sleep. No oh, problem. So he nice. sleeps the latest in the morning, great sleeper. But as a baby, he would take the shortest naps would cry in the middle of the night, hours, hours. I'm like, Oh, what am I doing wrong? So I took a sleep training class before my third, which was great because it just like calmed me down a little bit. It it wasn't like stick to this rigid schedule. It was just very like, this is why babies act this way. It, it calmed me down. So this is where I tell like these oh, new that's moms, like at my third, I still felt like I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. So, no. Yeah. And they're totally all different. Okay. Oh yeah. God. They're all different. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping my last would be my, my easy one. And he was a great baby, but he, as a four-year-old, he is, I can already envision he's going to be the teenager that punches a wall one day. Oh my God. That's oh, don't matter. put that out there. But I don't, wait, so you have three, so you have three, two, three boys, you have three yeah. as well. Yes. Okay. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. People I say used thing. To I say, thought though. My- yeah. People used to say, oh, the hardest transition is going from two to three because then you don't have any hands. Like you're yeah, out of hand. You I can't heard that hold too. Or your husband, you are outnumbered. You're but outnumbered. I, didn't, yeah. I didn't feel that way. Like I, I think I was more relaxed with the third. I was kind yeah, of, and it was totally. COVID. So we were just home all the time. Um, but I just felt like I was just more like chill. And I think he yeah. was a more chill baby. Cause I was just like, he's going to nap when he needs to nap. So yeah. Just like, so relaxed about it. Yeah. Yeah. Were you always a stay at home mom or? No, no. I, so with my first two, I worked uh, okay. at a hospital. I'm a nurse. Um, oh, okay. So yeah. And Rocco was born 
pre he was born in October of 2019. So it was like just when that shit went okay, down. Like, so I had December of 2019. So like, oh, yeah, him in and then yeah. the world shut down. Oh my God. Well, what happened when, so I was breastfeeding and I stopped breastfeeding when I went, I went back to work. I took an extra month off, went back to work in February and then the world shut down oh. in Mar- a month later. And the thing was I had stopped breastfeeding. Cause I'm like, there's no way I'm going to have enough time. Like you don't even have time to like, like go to the bathroom when you're working on the floor right. as a nurse. It's insane. But uh, yeah, like I can remember so mad at myself for stopping breastfeeding because I don't know if you remember this, but there was a time when there was like a formula shortage. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. I was freaking out. I'm like texting my lactation consultant. Is there any way I could like make milk make again? Come back. I'm panicking. Oh, but yeah. So that was ugh, oh that's that horrible. A lot. What so you're no longer nursing right now? You're no longer a nurse or I'm right. Yeah. I'm okay. no longer nursing in a hospital. In, in a hospital. Not nursing, but nursing. Um, I am what nursing. Made you, <laughs> what made you? Oh, that's right. Because you have your third. What made you yes. stop um, that? Is it like a temporary pause or? Because I, oh, I left I... the teaching world after 17 oh, years. Oh, you are When a Maverick was two. Oh. I left when he was okay. two. So I've been out for a while. So that was a big. So wait, was, is Maverick your third or the third? What? Yeah. He's so the third. When, okay. Yeah. So when so my youngest I'd, was two, I quit. So yeah, I just decided. So what happened for me, oh, this is kind of like a long story, <laughs> but let me make it short. Um, <laughs> so I actually had a miscarriage in between my second and third that rocked my world. Mm, yeah. And that was a total pivotal moment for me because it wasn't just like a miscarriage. Like I literally almost died. Um, oh, wow. Like my husband came home, found me, I was passed out on the toilet. Like wow. my daughter, thank God Rocco was sleeping. Uh, Lucia was actually up at the time. Rocco was like one and a half and Lucia was three. It was so bad. I needed blood and I needed surgery, all this stuff. But it just made me, it was like, you know, that um, near death experience type mm-hmm. thing. Like it made me just mm-hmm. question and examine my yeah. life. Yeah. And like my values. Right. And the thing is, is with this nursing, what I'm here on earth to do. Yeah. And um, being a nurse is a very like purposeful, meaningful. All jobs are meaningful. Mm-hmm. It. I think it is just all about like, your perspective and what you bring to it. However, I just did not, it didn't feel like aligned with me anymore, mm-hmm. at least like um, the season of my life, because right. as a nurse working on the floor at a hospital, and especially after COVID with the staff, the staff shortage, like so yeah. many people leaving the um, hospitals to either just like leave the career all together, or yeah. a lot of them were just leaving to do other things like, um, which I can't even think, uh, not registry nursing, but, um, where you like go, I can't even think of a travel Remote. nursing. Oh my Remote. God. Remote. Travel, okay. travel nursing. Yeah. Cause just because the, the pay is like insane. Uh, but anyway, uh, so with the staff shortage, we're getting like mandated to stay, over our scheduled hours, which, you know, if you're working an eight hour shift that can turn into a double, which is a 16 hour shift, which really ends up being like almost like 20 hours, at least for me, because I'd always at home. Yeah. And then just like you miss out on so much, you have to work every other weekend, every other holiday, Mm -hmm. you just like miss out on so much. And I just was like, I need to figure something else out. And um, that so sounds like me. Like I remember crying on my couch one night. Yeah. I got an email from my school because I was working in, um, it was a charter school for homeschooled kids. So I did have a lot of flexibility with my job, but it got to the point where they were like, we're going to start requiring you to do nine o'clock class, like virtual classes every day next year. And my first thought was my, my middle jet goes to preschool at nine and I can't, I wouldn't be able to drop them off anymore. And that the feeling of like me, like my mom could have done it. My husband could have done it, but I was like, but that's my job. I'm supposed to be the one taking them to preschool. And that just hit me. Like, this is not aligning anymore with what I want to be doing. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was a lot. So are oh. you so full stay at home mom now? I am besides, yeah, doing so. Yeah. I am also, I have the life coaching business, although I have decided to put that on hold and just focus on the podcast. So mm -hmm. I have a podcast too. Yes. And that's weird too. And maybe you can relate to this because it's like when people ask me, I know exactly. What it's just so like, it's, it's this so identity awkward. crisis. Like, I don't know. Yes. What am I like? Yes. I was just talking to, so I had an interview with, um, a woman who was a stay at home mom for 17 years and she just started her own podcast is trying to get back into it. And I was telling her it, I went from when people go, what do you do? I go, oh, I'm a teacher. And now they go, what do you do? And I'm like, I don't know. Well, I used to teach <laughs> yep. and now I am home with my kids and I have a podcast and I do potty training consultation. And I just feel like I have to justify the fact that I don't have a career anymore. Oh. Then I'm like, you know, I'm at the football field and all these moms are coming from work. And I'm like, do they look at me and say like, look at her? No, she doesn't work. It, it's I, a whole I, new identity that I'm trying to figure out. Oh, that and is then, soul like, I don't food make a for me. Anymore. Like it feels mm. so weird to not have a, not contribute when I actually mm. made more money than my husband. When I first met him, we were in our early twenties. And so like, I've always made my own money and like he yeah, has those bills. I have too. these bills. And now it's oh. so weird to be like, wait, it's our money now. But like, it, it's just such a change and I'm still getting uh, it. Same. Yeah. Same. It's hard. It's hard. And you're going to end up being, if you're not careful, like doing the work and, um, like having a look at your thinking really, uh -huh. and if you need to, I mean, I speak with a therapist. I've gotten coaching. Uh, it can do a lot to your self-worth too. Totally. Like that's in, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's something that I feel like I I'm just can, like connecting like, yes, yes, yes. I, everything you're yes, saying. <laughs> I know we need to have like a support group for, um, mom podcasters or something. Yes. Um, oh my gosh. But well, yeah, one I of the totally... things that you do in your coaching, you work with like self-care and I know like self-care mm. for moms is such a big thing, but everyone goes, but when do I have time for that? So like, what are like your mm -hmm. self-care? So tips? for me, and I think it's how you define self-care. Um, Cause like for me, I'm going to be honest with you. Like my self-care is not going out to the spa or getting my nails done. Like those things are nice, but that's not feeding my soul. Mm -hmm. um, what I need to do to feel, and it's going to be different for everybody. Like don't, I just hope that nobody listening or watching I don't want them to feel guilty for like not doing this. This is just, this is my self-care <laughs> is I have to get up before the kids. Number one, I have got to have that time in the morning at the start of my day to myself and I have to move my body. I have to get, I need to sweat. Yeah. I need to sweat. Yeah. Um. So that's my self-care and pr prayer and gratitude. Oh my God. Five minutes of gratitude. When I don't do it, I notice it. Feel I it. really do. Because that's when you're going to get that abundance. That's what's when you're going to get that. Because it's so easy to feel so sorry for. And it, that's okay. Totally. Too. Right. There's a but very good balance of like, you're a fine to a little pity party. But then you also, because, you know, my kids keep going, why do we live in this house? Why can't we have a two story? And I'm like, Ugh. I get it. Like, those houses are beautiful, but look at how amazing this is the house we used to dream about, you know, like this right. was our dream house. So like yeah. trying to refine them. Yeah, absolutely. Gratitude. Um, what do you yeah. do when you're trying to work out and your kids get up be before you want them to? Cause when mine were little, that would put me over the edge. Like I am oh. a morning workout person. And now mm -hmm. I'm like, they sleep till seven on school days. So I can go do my workout, get home and I have to wake them up now, but when they were little, oh, I remember I'd be like in the garage trying to work out and I could hear through the wall, like, Oh, one of them's up. Yeah. Like it would make yeah. me so angry. Uh, Yours are yeah. little now. They're probably still doing that. What do you do? So, um, so my four and six year old do not wake up before or while I'm working out. Cause okay. I'll come down sit where I'm at right now. It's like my little office slash, uh, workout area. Um, but yeah, so those two, they don't wake up. I get up or, I mean, I'm starting my workout at 5 a.m. So they're not okay. getting up, but, um, sometimes Serena will the two-year-old and I just fucking let her cry because <laughs> I do, because 
like Chris, take my husband, like take care of it. Because guess what? Like I put it, I need to do this. I did wake up like, cause I'm, and I'm still nursing, judge me, whatever. I'm like, Oh, Oh, no, I'm impressed. I could (laughs) never make it, um, to the year mark. I, I like right at the six month mark with all of mine, it just started tanking. And I tried to hold on as long as possible. But my last week, I think because of COVID, because I had him oh, home yeah. and I really just never pumped. I just like, just well, fed pump- him. Well, and I hate pumping. Oh yeah. God. I think that was going back to work. It just like. That's. Ooh, and really that's did. why I didn't. Well, with my first two, Lucia, I lasted like seven weeks and I wasn't even just breastfeeding the whole time. It was like supplementing with formula mm-hmm. too. And then Rocco, I did, it was like three and a half, maybe four months. Cause again, like going back to work, I knew I w- wouldn't Impossible. be able to pump. Yeah. Um, and then just with Serena, I didn't, I decided not to go back to work. So that's why I've been able to, and it's mm-hmm. at this point, it's just easier to do it. Right. Right. Yeah. It really is. It's, so, yeah. and I'm, I think I'm like traumatized too, from like that thing happening with Rocco and like, <laughs> that. Yes. I mean, I know intellectually, like <laughs> I've, put my time in like she's got she doesn't need it anymore but anyway do you think I'm sure you get asked this a lot do you think she's your last or do you think you? oh have? yeah okay no, so is that I'm another not. reason like this is my last it's gonna be because it was kind of hard for me on my last yeah one. like I knew yes. after the third I was like we are done I'm very yep. happy with three after two I was I like am... not sure three I was like Same. we are done so yes. not like stopping breastfeeding was like a little bit like, okay, that's going to be the last. That'll be it. Yes. I think that's what I'm holding on to, to you're right. Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's why I'm hanging um, on to it. Okay. Motherhood is wonderful and it's also crazy. What is something that you love about motherhood? I love so many things about <laughs> it. I really do. Like, I just love feeling this love, like this unconditional love. Like I just want everybody to be able to experience this. Mm -hmm. Um, especially like as human beings, like just, there are so many times when you just feel so like just unworthy and like, you're just not enough, but they think you're, you're there everything. Mm -hmm. And what's amazing is, and I just so forgiving. Like, it's just, they are so forgiving. Like I mess up all the time, like <laughs> yeah. the time and they just, it just, and they still love me. <laughs> yeah. And they don't hold grudges at least yet, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I know we've got a, a, a almost preteen and I'm like, Ooh, I feel like he's going to be a little challenge. You know, like when boys get older, it's like, dad's so cool. And like, mom, Aww. I feel like he's starting to get to like, mom's not as cool anymore. Oh, why do you think that? Uh, it just, he's in that cool stage. Like I helped in his classroom yeah. the other day and he was like, mom, please don't embarrass me. I'm like, oh my God, I really try my best. I. <laughs> oh my God. That's so funny. That's so nice that you volunteer. I want to start doing that. See, that that's- was something that when I was teaching, even though I could like kind of pick my schedule, it was like my week was full or like they, the teacher would yeah. ask for like a certain time. And I'm like, oh, I have a meeting during that time. I can't, right. this is like as much as I feel like I need to just like throw everything into my business and get it going so I can start making money again. I'm like, I also, I've been waiting years to be able to like, he's in fifth grade now. And I'm like, I can volunteer in your room and I can volunteer in your room and his room. I love. Yeah. Cause I want to, I think that that's awesome. And that's when I want to do more of this year. It'll get there when your youngest is probably in preschool. I think you're right because have, now like, it is hard. I have to find somebody to watch her. Exactly. And, yeah. Last year, every time she'd ask for volunteers, I'm like, oh, let me see if my mom can watch them during right. that time. Yeah. So now yeah. it's like, I like they have all day. It's yeah. It's that's so nice. Yeah. A whole new world has opened up for me. It's I'm great. so happy for you. <laughs> well, that that's reassuring too, because then something I feel like I have something to. to look forward to. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, it is hard moving from that, like baby toddler stage. Cause that's such a precious, like cute oh, time. And yeah. then you think like, oh, they're growing up, but like, there's so much to look forward to in those middle years. It's one, I feel like I'm like coming out of the clouds. Like I'm, I'm not like <laughs> drowning anymore. I'm like, okay, we're yeah. water again, doggy paddle. Yeah. Like we can yeah. do this. And it's so fun. And even though they are getting older and like, it's just, a, yeah, this is a very, very fun stage. Oh, that's awesome yeah. to hear. 
But uh, I still look back at their baby pictures. I'm like, they were so cute. I can't even look at them. I, can't I just want to hold them baby. again. I know. I, know. I still smell this them. So weird. Maverick last night, he was kind of tired on the couch. So I was like, I'm just going to carry you to the bathroom. So I like literally carried him like a baby. And I'm like, looking at the mirror. I'm like, Maverick, you're the biggest baby. You're huge. But then he's like, hold me like a baby again. Like, yeah, oh. you're probably 40 pounds, but it, <laughs> I was like, yes, I used to do this. And I'd put you in your crib. I know, and it was so easy, you know, mm -hmm. I know. But back then it felt so hard. I don't know why, I don't know why I couldn't find more joy in the moment. It just felt like every day was like, oh, just get through today. Get well, through. just you're in survival mode. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. For sure. You're in survival mode. So you can't. Totally. Yeah. 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 Now I feel like we're, we've got a good groove going on. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, what about marriage and kids? How was, how to have kids affected your marriage? Well, there's the bedroom part. I mean, <laughs> my that's kids. a given. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well, now just... ours are so old that I'm like, we'd like have to lock the door now. I'm like, oh, I was, yeah. you know, when you have littles, you don't even think they're we in just the crib. The they're doors fine. are open. Now I'm like, yeah. oh, let's make sure we lock the door. <laughs> Well, ours are like sleep judge. Here we go. Like people are going to judge, but ours end up sleeping with us. Like Lucia last night, she slept in her own bed. Morocco ended up in our bed and Serena too. Like it just. <laughs> Did you before kids say, I will never let that happen. Or were you like. You know what? I didn't even, I guess I didn't even think about that. But yeah, no, I mean, with a lot of other things. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're the perfect mom <laughs> yeah. until you are a mom. They will never eat my car. Now I'm like oh, back in Cheerios oh, out. They'll like, never okay. eat microwaveable macaroni. Oh and God. <laughs> <laughs> or hot dogs. Oh, heaven forbid. Yeah. That's like the staple dinner. <laughs> That's on yeah. the menu every other day. <laughs> right. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, just the sleep and, but in a lot of ways it's made us, um, closer I think and just like appreciate each other more mm -hmm. I think is your husband pretty hands-on like he does help out a lot lately he's been working a lot but um but no he will yeah when he's full and he helps out too like he'll yeah. do the dishes at yeah. night like we'll kind of like divide and conquer we used to when it was just two you know we used to split up and like I'd put one to bed and he'd put the other one to bed <clears throat> Um, and now that it's, it's basically like I'm nursing Serena to sleep and he's supposed to be putting the others to bed and <laughs> a uh, wrestling match in the other room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think, I don't know. We have a whole lot less time to like, you know, go out and we're not doing date nights mm -hmm. anymore. And, you yeah. know, we're so exhausted at the end of the night. Like we're not like really having time just the two of us mm -hmm. um but I don't know I feel like we've also got grown closer and like I feel like it's <sighs> made us appreciate each other more and I feel like our the love is different like it feels mm -hmm. stronger right I don't it's know it's like you're going through battle together you know like we're in yeah. this together we can yeah. survive this we can come through yes. this like yes yeah. And so many Definitely. people talk That's about like, way. it is important to still connect when you have little kids because they're going to grow up. And I'm like, I feel like I know. even though we're like crazy busy and, you know, it's always kid, 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 like we're doing it together. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There'll, there'll be time to hang out, you know, when the kids are gone. <laughs> right, right. But 16 more years. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, yeah, but go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, like, I get a lot of help. My mom lives very close by. So like, if that's, we did want to oh, go on a date so night nice. or if we wanted, like he, my husband coaches football right now for my older son. And he was like, he texted me yesterday when the season's over, we need to take a weekend getaway. So like, I have my mom oh, that's and she so can nice. watch him for the weekend. Yeah. Do you have a village? Do you have? No, like, and this is. So I do have, so I don't live close to any family or friends. So I live in Northwest Indiana. I'm from the Boston area. Um, that's where all my family 
close friends are. Um, but we live his. So this is where my husband's from. <clears throat> I have my mother-in-law and basically that's all I have um, to depend on. And I don't know if you've ever found this, but I just, so we've had babysitters, but I just don't have a whole lot of luck with them. And... I've only had a handful. We finally yeah. found one I loved and she was great. Like I literally came home and she was playing this like game with them. They had made flags doing all this. And I'm like, wow, you're doing more than I would do. Right. But then she That's graduated awesome. from college and moved to New York. And so we lost her. And then like with COVID, it was like, I didn't want anyone coming in my house. We couldn't have like, no one was available. So other than my mom, it's like, I don't really use anyone. I know. And it, there's the other thing that it's like trusting mm -hmm. the, like I've even coached women on this, like, but I struggle <laughs> with it myself. Like, yes. yeah. Like just trusting other people with your kids and to come into your home. Uh, there's a lot. And yeah. I didn't go it's hard too. when I first started, I was like, I'm going to let you watch them. And I'm going to go in this room and get work done. But then you hear Doesn't everything happen. and you're like, mm -hmm. Ronan, stop using that language. Wait, okay. I'm just going to leave you alone. I'm going right. to, hard not to, so I had to, it is. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. I know. I, I had one babysitter. I'll be interested to, th to see what you think about this. So I had one babysitter when I was starting all this. Um, and I would just be like, okay, you take over. Like when you're here, like you're the boss. Yes. Not me. Yes. I don't want to. Yeah. Don't let them me. knock on my door. Get them yeah. To yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and you take on, yeah. Like if you discipline them or whatever, like whatever. So uh, mm. <laughs> this one babysitter, so she had told me oh it actually was I should have I should have known like this was a red flag and the day that she came and I was like interviewing her which it wasn't really an interview it was just like hey do you want to do it okay yeah. great like I see that you're like usually for me it's like meet my kids and see if you want to stay right <laughs> I'm like they're a lot <laughs> oh so funny oh my god um but yeah no she said well they're she said something like, well, there are no rules here. So, and I was like, what? Like, I never said there, there are rules, but <laughs> they just might not follow them. Like at the time I literally had, I didn't even have Serena yet. I had Lucia who was like three and Rocco who was like one and a half or maybe just turned two. But I was like, what? And then later on, so she ended up leaving and she like, so it was like her, so her last day there, which I didn't realize until like, it was the end of the day. And she's like, well, I'm not going to come back because, and I was like, oh, why? And she was like, well, your daughter, Lucia, she just doesn't respect me. Meanwhile, this girl is not a mom. She's 23 oh years gosh. old. A and three year old? Yeah. At the time, Lucia, the, I know I was like, <laughs> okay, like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. That one didn't work out. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so that one didn't work out. But yeah, it's just like experiences like that. And then just like other ones where it's just like, I, I don't want to have to tell, like when you leave and there are like toys all over the place, like can you at least yes. can you just like pick up? Like, yes. like yeah. I don't want to have to tell you that. Like, does it, do I really have to like tell you my expectation? Yeah. Like, I feel like that should just be like, like that's a given, right? Intent. Yeah, like help like them clean up paying you or don't leave dishes. Yeah. Yeah. You know. It's hard. And that's why I think I just didn't really look other than the two college. I had a college girl and then another college girl a little bit later, they were the only ones, but they're both gone. So now it's, Ugh. I know. And then that's it is like, they leave. They, yeah. <laughs> like once like, you find oh, a good one. Working out, oh yeah. But you're actually going to go live your life. Okay. Right. Like, yeah. You don't want to stay and help out. Right. Help us out, please. <laughs> but it like, it takes a special person to watch my boys. Cause they are <laughs> crazy. One time I came home. And the babysitter I did like, um, they were playing like a hide and seek kind of game, but like you hide with the other person. Anyways, we were oh, looking yeah. all over for my oldest. She's like, I, Ronan's hiding and I can't find him. And I finally was like, Ronan, come out. You can't like, there's like a code word, like get out. Like you can't hide anymore. He was hiding in the dryer, like <laughs> went into the dryer and was hiding there. I was like, oh, I oh, think she kind of looked at me like, oh my God, I didn't know who did and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what is happening here? 
it was kind of crazy. So yeah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Let me hear about what you do in your podcasts. Cause I always love connecting yeah. with other moms that started podcasts. It's yeah, so fun. I know. I know. This is so great. Thank you so much for having me on too. Cause this has been just so, fun. so well, nice. That's why I started talk. my podcast. Cause my husband's like, right. if you don't teach, what would you like to do? And I was like, well, I like to talk to moms. I just love like yeah. meeting a mom at the park and chit-chatting. I'm like, I like right. to talk to moms. I like to help them. Right. Okay. And, and that's my like new career. Therapy. <laughs> it See, is for me though. Like it, it's like, I don't really like that, that surface level conversation anymore. This is like nice. I feel like it's like therapy. Yes, um, yeah. I always get but, off my interviews. My husband's like, how'd it go? And I'm like, oh, she was so wonderful. and so cute. Like I just oh. feel filled up when I get yeah. to talk to moms. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I am a life coach. However, I decided I am going to take a break from that right now, because like I said, I've just been trying to work with my therapist to live <laughs> life by my values. And like last year I didn't, I was just so, I think I overcommitted to so many different things. Like yeah. I was working on this time management course, which is like left undone. Uh, and then just okay, like, I, I just totally get it. Yeah. I've been like saying, just, I'm going to make my potty training course for two years. Uh, oh, girl, maybe we finally, need to hold each other accountable. I'm finally <laughs> starting it, but it's because my kids are in school yeah, that whole time. It was like every like millisecond I would get, I would try and get work done. And then I feel like I never did anything. I so know. Now I feel like I'm like, this is my time now. To well, now is your time. And this is, and that's Actually, what I'm like working through. I'm like this, okay, this is a season. I can come mm -hmm. back to that. But like right now but we feel like, like you must get it done. Here's my to-do list. It's like, it's okay that your to-do list is like clean my house and be with my kids today. Like I keep telling my myself kids, summer vacation yeah. was, I'm not going to record podcasts. I'm not going to worry about you. like doing this because Ugh, I wish like, I did that. Far. It was too, yeah. I put too much yeah. pressure on myself. Yeah. That's it is putting, yeah. yeah, we do. We put way too much pressure mm -hmm. on ourselves. And I wish, I love that you did that this summer. And I wish, I think I'm going to do that this summer. Well, I'm right now too. I'm doing, I'm scaling back instead of doing the weekly podcast. I'm going to do every other week. I decided Just give yourself a break because it is hard when you get to the point where you're like, I don't have anything pre-recorded for next week. So you're like, okay, things what's it going to be? Yep. So are yours mostly, cause I saw you have interviews and uh, interview and solo it's like a hodgepodge yeah too. yeah my yeah. and mine range from like baby registries to menopause like there's yeah. still yeah, no range. There's, I didn't niche down at all <laughs> no yeah me neither it's, yeah it's fun me neither it's just but it like is whatever's... hard when I don't have something in the works it's like oh gosh what yeah. am I going to talk about this week yeah yeah. I always just draw from like whatever the hell I'm going through in the mm -hmm. moment. And that's a great thing about this too. What I love is like turning like just something that can be like so negative and, or just something that's like really hard that I'm going through. And I'm like, oh, I can make that a podcast. There's my episode. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. There, I'm sure Thank there's you, somebody... daughter, for having that massive temper tantrum. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like it's just turning the strut. Like somebody else is going through this too. Like this yep. is what I learned, or maybe I haven't even learned it. I'm working through it. Like here you yeah. go. Like I yeah. hope this helps. <laughs> yeah. This is how I fumbled my way through that. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So when did you start your podcast? How long ago? I, actually, it's going to be a year next week. Yeah. It was October 4th. It was October okay, 4th of last year. That's a big year. deal. That's exciting. Yeah. And Yay. I've made it. Yeah. Right. And Good just to you. think like, so I'm in my forties and I figured out how to record, edit, yeah. like upload it. I mean, I don't want to tell people, but it's not as hard as you think, but right. yeah, just yeah, yeah. Feel like I figured that out. And like, that was a big, that's, like, that's a big that accomplishment. It, yeah, it is. It's yeah. it for me. I, and I'm not a social media, just so you know, like before all this, like I was a nurse, I was not on social media. Mm -hmm. I wasn't because I, I don't like it to be honest. I just don't like, the I way get I feel. very addicted. So I have to like balance, it, like, well, it's this is my job. I have to be on it, but also like, it's been too much. For no, me. it's not yeah. you though. It's designed to be addictive. Yes. Yeah. So and I'm actually I reading like, a book about that. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. So that's why I don't like, I don't like 
any act buffer it we call it like buffering activities like doing things to like avoid feeling an emotion or like numb your feelings mm -hmm. Ugh. but in and, and it just and I have like such a strong value on like time because that is like the that's my currency like that is what I value the most well besides my family god mm. like my time is yeah. the most Precious. um expensive thing in my life my time mm -hmm. But, um, and that it's just, it sucks your time away from you. But anyway, I didn't know how to do anything. Like I did not know how to work Instagram and I've learned all of this. Like right. I did my own website every, cause I'm working on a budget. Yes. Like I literally do. And I'm sure you do this too. Like I'm doing it all myself. It's mm -hmm. yes. I don't have an editor. I don't have a, I don't, have, I don't either. I have Google and you yeah. let me figure it out. <laughs> so it's, but it's made you and me so resourceful yes. and then. Yeah. You could just like draw on that. Like, look at what like you created. Yes. This so is when what people we ask you, what do you do? You go, oh, I'm the host of a podcast. Like I'm trying to get better at. Oh my God. I am, I am a mom, but I'm a host of a podcast as well. Yeah. Yes. And that it's weird because actually just the other day I had Rocco in this uh, class. It's like little ninjas um, is, is what it's called. And I'm sitting next to this other mom and she's asking me what I do. And I'm like, I have a podcast and it just feels so weird to say, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah. And then someone who like was like, oh, I saw your Instagram reel. That was funny. You're like, oh, you did. Oh God. Yeah. That's right. People what see did it. You? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so but they're, supposed, but they're supposed to, and good, good for you for doing it. Like, oh, I wish right, I, oh, I, like every other day I go, should I have done this? Should I have just stuck with teaching? Should I like, should I try something Ugh, I else? Know. Like every day I'm thinking, but me, then I do interviews like too. this and I'm like, yes, this is it. This is so yes. fun. I love it. But then it people do fun. ask me, oh, so you have a podcast. How do you make money on it? I'm like, that's not your business. No, <laughs> that'll, that'll be there. Don't, don't you worry about it. It yeah. will. It will. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It, so. You got to put the work in first. Exactly. Exactly. Everyone says two years to get it like going. So yeah. Okay. We're there halfway there. Halfway there. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Tell us the name of your podcast and how we can find it. Yes. So the name of the podcast is the mom and Tum podcast. Love like it. Podcast. Um, and really they can find it. I'm on Spotify. I'm on Apple podcasts and Podbean. I haven't, uh, taken the time I'm to figure out the rest, but for sure I feel like on those, those three. are the two that people use, right? I'm like, if it's yeah, Spotify, Spotify and Apple, and Apple right? Yeah. 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 So that's where they can find me. Awesome. Well, this was so fun chatting with you. I had such a wonderful conversation. Same, same here. Maybe next time you could come on my podcast. Absolutely. Send me your link. I'll, I'll schedule it. What a wonderful conversation that was. I know after I uh, stopped recording, we probably chatted for another 20 minutes because she was just such a delight. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed that conversation and got some inspiration from it to get through to next week because um, I have another podcast coming out next Friday. And like always, I am here to remind you to just keep flipping. <laughs>